Krima Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The future of manufacturing in South Africa has in recent times raised concerns across the manufacturing sector. This has since seen multinational electronics company Siemens advocating that technology will be at the forefront of manufacturing in years to come. Zandile Mavuso has the story. Last month, Siemens held its Future of Manufacturing conference in Boxburg, which highlighted technological advancements that will prove to change the industry for the better. To support this notion, Siemens unveiled a Curiosity Mars rover, which currently lives on Mars and conveys vital information about the planet back to Earth. Being asked on the potential of South Africa being a great manufacturing country in the future, Siemens Vice President Raymond Padiachi says South Africa has the potential to be one of the leading countries in manufacturing. The answer has to be first of all a yes. Um, the yes is on the basis of the success that we have in this country. And a good example in the automotive sector, we manufacture uh, motor vehicles in South Africa and supply the world and many of the manufacturing companies or the international companies have set base in South Africa and able to produce competitively. Industry is about how do we manufacture very efficiently? How do we improve productivity and create efficiency? That is what technology is supposed to do. Now from a manufacturing point of view, to manufacture and be competitive in the world, we need to ask ourselves how do we actually do this? Now, high levels of automation is what is required. We need to use automation technology for that. Some of the factories in South Africa resemble museums. And if we want to tackle the market to grow our manufacturing, then we have to tap into other markets. That means we have to become an export country. To be an export country, we have to manufacture efficiently. Now, we need to look at this automation, and automation is about connecting all aspects of manufacturing. That means it needs to be networked from a communication perspective in the entire manufacturing environment. So we have to look at how high levels of automation technology will improve manufacturing. We can do it. We do do it in other parts of the world. So we have to invest now to be part of what one would call future of manufacturing and for manufacturing to address the challenges that government has. Padiachi notes that in order to be a leading manufacturing country, learners have to be encouraged to study maths and science in order for them to become engineers that will design and manufacture for the future. Now maths and science is the key to engineering. It's the key to the kind of industry or manufacturing is about. So when one looks at that, as a country, we are not producing nearly enough uh, people or, or students from schools that are in readiness to get into universities, to study engineering at, at all levels. As a company, we invest as well. We invest in science and technology. Recently, we've invested in, the, in a school in the Eastern Cape our, our School of Science and Technology, Nelson Mandela School of Science and Technology, was built at a cost of 100 million rand. Now, this is again what we are putting back into the economy, what we are putting back into the country, it's what we are putting back in nation building. Now, once you have this maths and science uh, uh, attraction, we're going to build on the skills because they're going to go to universities, they're going to learn and they're going to study and become these engineers. What we also find is that government needs to play an e equally an important role. In fact, government has a responsibility. They owe it to the nation and they owe it to the people to develop our people. And to do this, they need to ensure that they have programs where young people coming out of school can look at the apprenticeship programs that we have. They can look at programs that develop them on, 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 on the technical side. Companies need to provide that experience for developing them on the technical side. As part of its initiative to encourage young engineers, Siemens Cyber Junkyard Challenge ran concurrently with the conference, which saw students such as those from the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University, North Link College, 
North West University and College of Cape Town produce technology-driven products which proved their manufacturing capabilities. This is a coffee roaster machine that focuses on fluid with coffee roasting. What we have over here is it's very simple to use. You select the roast over there, then you get your profiles. You can select if you want a Kenyan, an Ethiopian or a Tanzanian. Right? So once you select Kenyan, what happens is you select now light, medium or dark. So each of these has its own profile. So what happens is a light will roast at a, a shorter time than a medium and a medium will roast at a shorter time than a dark roast. So, on and so, on. so it depends what the consumer wants. Next, let's say we select light. Right, you have your stages. This is, what, this is what happens now inside the machine. So once we switch on, the light button will go on. So for the first three stages, it's the pre stages. This is where the bean just kind of gets its swirl going on and it starts to get its, some heat. For stage four to stage five is the first pop. What happens to the first pop is, this is when the bean is at a light roast now. So if you want light, you cut it off at, at stage five. But if you want a darker roast, a medium or dark, you keep on going to stage six, stage six and stage seven. What happens here in these stages are each one is programmed at its own temperature, at its own time, depending on the bean. So a Kenyan bean will roast differently to an Ethiopian or a Tanzanian bean. And then we have a cooling stage. What happens in the cooling stage is the beans, instead of taking them out and exposing yourself to being um, damaged or hurt by heat, what happens is inside here the heaters will switch off. Then the blower motor will continue running, so the beans will now be cooled. And then at the end of the cooling stage, everything switches off. We have this thing called Coffee Connect, right? What Coffee Connect does is it takes existing coffee machines and it connects them to the PLC of, of, the, of the same roaster. So what happens is now, if you want to grind a batch, you go there and you select grind. And the grinder will switch on, right? You don't have to press any buttons there. Then if you want to brew, you go there. This brew machine will pop up, so you will see it there. You select brew, the light goes on over there. Stop brew, the light switches off. And you can keep your coffee heated as well. So the Coffee Connect is basically our new technology, our new integrated business solution that we are offering consumers. So it cuts down on preparation time, it's quick, it's fast, you easily control it. Uh, what we're basically doing, we're a team from Northwest University. Uh, we're producing a cupcakes with a cupcake machine. Uh, they, the initial invention was actually uh, implemented by the Northwest University. A uh, private company um, uh, asked us if we, uh, if we can do a project um, on supplying a bit of cup, cupcakes for them. The reason for this is they built a machine uh, acquired, I think, two years ago and um, the machine wasn't feasible so they scrapped it. Uh, the mass of the, the volume they're pushing out varied a lot. Um, so what we're doing is, it's just a basic 3D, um, it like, works like a CNC machine and we've got a conveyor and we're decorating the cupcakes. Okay, the reason is um, currently you can import machines that do similar things. However, um, most of those machines are designed using um, buttermilk. Um, so it's not icing per se, but it looks like icing. However, the problem is um, with this, like, like you said, the way to um, volume ratio is very hard to control with um, automatically with icing sugar. And our machine currently is about approximately, um, all the, but that's roughly about 60 grand. But that's because um, of um, ordering um, things, okay? And the reason why ours is feasible is that it is capable of um, being used in sequence to implement uh, several multiple functions, several multiple um, uh, patterns. However, when you import one, it has one function, one, one function only. So um, the company that approached us, uh, this wasn't feasible for them, um, even though they produce 45,000 cupcakes a day. Now, our project um, was to show that it is possible to um, implement this at a fraction of the cost, because um, paying 3.2 million to import a, um, a machine that has one function is not feasible for them. Um, but ours, in the end, it will be uh, capable of being used in sequence. Um, six of these can do six different functions, and if you want to do the same function, it um, multiplies your production rate by six, and that's why it's so feasible. Our product is called, is a, it's called the Oxtron. It's an AGV, which stands for Automated Guided Vehicle. Um, it's basically, you can use it in the industry uh, to replace conveyor belt systems or used for precision, like, 
testing. If you have a lot of, say, 50 engine blocks, you can test one block, put it on here. You can rotate it around and check out how it's working. You can also implement it in the farming industry where you can attach a seed planter or a um, weeding system. In industry currently, there are, there are AGVs. Um, this product is cost effective comparing to the other AGVs and this one is built modularly. So what, what it means is you can take it apart in four minutes. You can buy individual modules like your Siemens brands. You can implement, if you want to take the wheel out, remove two pins, it pulls out. You can put another one in. That's helpful if, you, if your one wheel breaks, you can just replace it with the other one, send us the one and we'll fix it for you. Our product is a biogas heating system, uh, micro, home, office, industries like your factories and government sectors and complexes. So what it does is um, we kind of got the idea to save energy, to help save the energy actually by using recycled um, materials like your wood chips as we are doing right here yeah, to heat up a room. So that means yeah, less electricity bills and more um, uh, heat in, in, in your house and all. So yeah, this is a Dutch oven which um, combustion processes take place in and then once the Dutch oven has heated up, the hot air is transferred to the boiler which heats up the water surrounding the boiler pipes and as you can see the smoke there, that's supposed to be air but yeah, it's, it's, it's a prototype so it's, we're working on it. After having judges evaluate and assess the technology brought forth by the students, the College of Cape Town students were the overall winners of the Saba Junkyard Challenge. This is how they felt after they won. Oh, we felt ecstatic. We were so excited. We were so nervous. It was like you were third place and heart was already pumping. <laughs> we did it and then second place came and we were like, oh, we're still not there. Could this be it? Could this be finally first place? Could all our hard work have paid off? And then our name came up on the screen and it was like, it was just magic. Everything just, all that nervousness, the time, everything, it just went away and we were just so happy. And the plan moving forward is we will be selling our, prod, our product to um, coffee distributors, guys that buy roasters and so forth and we distribute the coffee. We will also be distributing our own coffee and our own collegiate brand. Um, we are already in talks with companies to sell our coffee roasting machine because there is a huge market for coffee. What we'd also like to have is as time goes on we will be having um, bigger roasting chambers so that you can roast more beans and so forth and so that we can also compete with the international market. One day we would like to have our coffee, mach coffee roasting machines exported around the world because we are trying to bring coffee back to Africa. We don't want it to be a fringe thing and so forth. That is ours and we want it back. One key point coming out of the conference was its strong focus on education. This plays a key role in ensuring a positive future for manufacturing in South Africa. For Crema Media TV, I'm Zandile Mavuso, Birchwood Conference Centre, Boxburg. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.